Welcome to Unsuitable on Ray Radio, the award-winning financial services and business advisory podcast that challenges your old-school business practices and the traditional business suit culture. Our guests are industry professionals and experts who will challenge you to think beyond the suit and tie while offering you meaningful modern solutions to help you enhance your company's growth. I'm your host, Dave Kane. New entrepreneurs are faced with a lot of challenges and frankly, oftentimes they are unequipped to deal with many of the obstacles that stand in their way. On today's episode of Unsuitable on Ray Radio, we're going to dive deeper into the journey of an up-and-coming entrepreneur and uncover some of the hiccups they will encounter. Then we're going to offer some pretty simplistic but incredibly important tips from a very experienced business advisor to help you take your business endeavors to the next level. We are pleased to have Melaine Howell, a senior tax consultant in Ray's Dublin, Ohio office with us today. Melaine has helped more than a few startups get on their feet, and she's going to share her insights with us today. Welcome back to Unsuitable, Melaine. Thanks. Great to be back, Dave. And it's good to see you. You know, one of the things we want to do before we get started is we want to review uh, your credentials. Oh, no. And uh, <laughs> have our, uh, get our listeners uh, get to know you a little bit better. So okay. we have a couple questions we want to we want to ask you. Obviously, you have 20-plus years' experience in the CPA profession. You're giving away my age. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oops. That was, uh, that was in your contract, wasn't it? <laughs> so when you go on vacation, do you prefer uh, camping or staying in a five-star hotel? Oh, definitely camping. And camping. What about uh, grilling and campfire or dinner with tablecloth and candles the campfire would campfire. definitely win yep do you prefer a cold long neck out of the cooler or a brandy a cold long neck no cans it's got to be a long neck got to be a long neck <laughs> you like acoustic guitars or electric guitars oh acoustic acoustic and you play your music loud or soft oh it's loud it's loud on scale 1 to 10, 10 being high, so is it like an 8? Kind of. Or is yeah, it 10? You try to get to pretty, the 10? Yeah, it's right. at least an 8. Louder okay. the better. Now, you know, those credentials, that doesn't sound like a CPA and consultant in uh, business startups. <laughs> I guess We're as unconventional as you get. There you go. I guess it's kind of the, uh, the unsuitable. But what we want to do today is talk about some of the challenges to... Uh, starting uh, a new business, and you've been, uh, over your uh, course of your career, been involved with some who have succeeded and some who have not, and I think we want to pick your brain on, on that topic. Sure. You know, the challenge to starting a business, um, what's the starting point? What's the number one thing that you like to focus on when you're consulting with a, a startup business? So I like to talk to them first about doing their homework or doing some research. Similar to all you parents out there, when you're getting ready to have a baby, what do you do? You buy the books, you talk to other parents, you are excited about it. It's a new kind of new uncharted territory for you, maybe not for some other people, but for you. And so you do your homework, you read everything you can, you talk to people, you look on the internet, you ask other parents, and then obviously you know it's something you want to do. In many cases, it's already coming and you're just merely preparing as much as you can for what's right around the corner. So when I talk to people that are beginning a new business, I talk to them about what kind of research they've done, what kind of homework have they done. Um, is there a market for their product or their service? Um, if there is a market, is anyone else doing it in their area? What's your competition? Um, do you need to maybe fine tune your idea if, or your service if something similar is being offered? What problem or solution is your product or service offering. So you're trying to head off any problems at, at right at the start right. and, and does the business idea serve a need? Right. And, and what you're saying is business uh, research or market research is a, is a key. That's absolutely key. What about how do you analyze the competition when you're beginning uh, a new business endeavor or you start thinking about it? Right. So there's 
as you know, there's all kinds of resources, right? You get on the internet, you can find anything and everything. So, A, you probably want to see is your research or is what you're finding credible? Um, you may want to touch base with your local chamber of commerce to see what other types of businesses like yours are out there. Um, you might want to talk to others or tap into some professional or entrepreneurial associations in your area to try and see if they have any research or credible research as to if your product is out there or going to be viable in, in the area. Well, many prospects that we talk to, it seems like the first thing they want to do is go out and and form a, a corporation or an LLC, and you're saying, wait, wait a minute, time out, let's put the brakes on, we're not ready for that, we've got to test the market. Right, absolutely. So what other things in the market testing can you, uh, can you target or suggest to a prospect? So as far as to test the market, um, you obviously your, your biggest resources and your easiest resources, friends and family, right? Tap into them, say, hey, I have this new idea or this new product, what do you think? Um, you can go and obviously visit your chamber of commerce. Say, you know, I have this new idea, what do you think? Is it out there? Um, if you're looking at starting a business, you may even want to talk to, try and gather your team together, meaning your trusted business advisors. Talk to them about your idea. Um, see if it's anything that they've ever heard of. What about, what about egos? How are egos and how do they come into play as you start this up? Obviously, you're talking to me. I got a huge ego. I'm not failing, but I think I can bypass the homework. Right. So the, what you're turning up your nose on that. Right, no. You're like ready to slug me on that one. <laughs> what comes to mind is, I don't know if any of you watch Shark Tank, but sometimes you see someone come on that show and they're so excited about their idea and then... The panel obviously says, oh, we've seen it, or oh, it's out there, and they don't have any idea, and they're kind of deflated. But then the takeaway is maybe they, again, fine-tune it. Sometimes entrepreneurs are so excited about their idea or their product that they're less objective than they need to be, which is why it's so important to put that aside and really dive into the research and then make a business decision. We're going to talk about business plans here in a minute, but obviously before you like go into deep dive into business plan, this market research has to be done. It's a given. Right, correct. You know, no negotiation there. You got to do it. And I've heard you, you know, talk to uh, prospects and, and folks who are thinking about it, and you won't even go any further unless you know about the market research. Correct. Yep, absolutely. I don't want them to waste to a bunch of money and dollars and time and effort on something that may not be successful if they haven't really, really done their homework. Okay. Let's talk about the business plan. Where does that fall in your, your thinking? Is that maybe the second item out of the gate after the market research has been done? It has to fall pretty pretty high up in your priority. I, I would say so. You know, and sometimes when you say business plan, that is, that's kind of a, you're like, what does that mean, right? And when I think of business plan, I've seen business plans that are 60, 75 pages, which it certainly Ouch. doesn't need to be that long, right? It needs to be focused. I think that's the important piece of it. And if you're trying to raise and maintain um, capital, that certainly is an important piece of the process, meaning in getting a loan, a lot of times banks will say, do you have your business plan? We'd like to see it. Um, you know, and of course, some resources for that are out on the internet. Small Business Administration has some resources for developing your own business plan. And again, it doesn't have to be lengthy. It just has to be focused. And it does have to have three main components, which are your business concept, your marketplace research, and then your financial sections, meaning how do you intend to, um, to get the capital that you need? And then what are your projections going forward? I mean, sometimes obviously this is ever evolving, but um, you, know, you need to start somewhere. So brevity, I guess, is, 
is maybe a, a key of the day. Yeah, and your banker would be able to tell you or um, someone that's advising you on the loan process as to what needs to be in there and, you know, obviously what is um, essential versus maybe what's some fluff that, that you could certainly could put in, put in there, but it's more for you than for the bank. Okay. You had mentioned uh, cash flow and capital. Um, uh, let's go directly there. How do I obtain and maintain uh, capital and cash flow? So that certainly is a huge challenge, right? Um, cash is key, especially in a new business. And oftentimes, an entrepreneur will save his own money or her own money and obviously put that into the business. Um, some obviously go to friends and family. Some seek out loans. Um, some are private investors. Maybe you have someone that's involved that you know about that's in a related business that you go to and they say, hey, that's a great idea. I never thought about that. I want to invest in your product or your service. It's complementary to their business, right? So it just makes sense. Again, I've seen it all over, but the point is, is that you have to reach out and talk to people. You know, we hear an awful lot of uh, funding ideas like uh, GoFundMe, crowdfunding, Kickstarter, starter rocket hub is that is that a resource worth looking into in the early stages it it certainly is and i know it has a lot of buzz right now um it's been talked about what i have learned is that oftentimes while you think that's going to be your cash cow and you're going to raise all this money like with a gofundme office oftentimes that's enough maybe to launch your service or product it's certainly not enough to sustain your product or service. And that, that's really where the long-term planning comes into effect. So you're looking at sustainability yeah. as, as, as that. Um, what would you suggest, again, uh, in the early stages of funding with the capital? Is it, you know, you talked about family members, but you got to get maybe in front of some traditional lenders absolutely yep and you know some of it is industry driven meaning um, certain lenders are more comfortable lending if you're to you if your business is in a certain industry versus others based on their market research they've done their homework and they realize that hey if you're if you usually have a service in this industry it, a lot of times it's more successful, there's less loan default, blah, blah, blah. And so they'll discuss that with you. Um, again, talking to multiple lenders. Um, sometimes the larger banks, if you have a, a non-traditional idea, sometimes the larger banks aren't willing to loan you money. You may have to go to a smaller bank and that they will cater sometimes to your smaller business and really um, run with you um, with the idea. So again, tap into um, both your, your smaller and larger banks when you're looking for capital. How do you handle when you're looking at a, a project for an entrepreneur, how do you handle when the, the capital is way short? Ooh, and that happens that's a tough frequently. One. Right. That is a tough one. Um, you know, it depends on what stage they're in, right? If they're in the business development stage and they haven't actually launched their service, their product, maybe it's pulling back. Maybe it's looking at their market a little bit better, um, tweaking their product or service. If they've already launched their product or service, that's obviously harder. And that cash is key. If, you, if your business is already up and running, um, you know, then you have to talk about strategies to either A, raise some cash pretty quickly, or maybe even stop and kind of rethink Regroup. and regroup and go back to the drawing board. Well, that's a good point. And maybe we talk about what are, what are my expectations or what are the expectations? I have an idea, do the market research until I, I launch. What are realistic expectations? should I have between the time I, I start the plan 
and actually get into to business, first day of business? So it's funny you should ask this question because I just looked at something that said you can go from your business idea to actually launching your business in two weeks. Okay, I... <laughs> what? We're, we're, we've all got some funny faces around here. That's not very realistic, right? <laughs> so <laughs> that's probably not a realistic expectation. I would say um, market research, you know, that could take you a month. Um, then gathering your advisory team, setting meetings up with them, um, really talking about the nuts and bolts of starting your business, resources to um, filing the paperwork to start your business. What sort of legal um, paperwork do you need? Meeting with the attorney, all of that can take you know, a, quite a few months. So I would say probably at a minimum, maybe s six months okay. um, would probably be somewhat realistic. Sometimes it's a year. So your role as a trusted advisor, a lot of times you have to slow the process down and you have to be very honest with that individual that, hey, we're not ready to launch. We're not ready to go. We're undercapitalized. Have you found that to be a very difficult conversation? Um, you know, not exactly when I explain why we're pulling back. There have been times where clients have come to me and they've organized their business um, and or in such a way that is not advantageous for tax reasons and they don't have any idea. Meaning, you know, they were talking to their neighbor and their neighbor had a business and was maybe set up in a, as an S-corp when they should be, really, it would be ideal for them to be set up as a single member LLC. They don't understand um, all of the compliance issues with each sort of entity type. So when I talk to them about why it's so important to have all the pieces of the puzzle on the table and that sometimes that can take some time, um, then they kind of understand and that the end result may be that if they're profitable, they may end up paying more in either tax or even legal fees or tax fees to kind of fix, to get the, um, the type of structure that they should have received and should have um, formed if we would have slowed down the process and, and kind of talked about that earlier. Earlier, you'd mentioned about um, a gathering an advisory team. Who's on that advisory team? So, of course, your CPA should be on the advisory team. One that likes acoustic yeah. guitars <laughs> and, long right, and long right, necks, right. and long necks, yeah, right? Yeah, right. I can okay. have a beer and talk to you uh, about business. Okay. That's all right. Um, your banker, obviously, talking about raising capital. Um, an attorney, you're going to need to put together a pretty um, a good agreement for yourself. And then um, it would also be great to have a business mentor, meaning someone that's kind of been there through that process that may be able to talk to you about some of the things that are coming ahead. Um, also, a lot of times with new businesses, there are peer groups that you can tap into that maybe have seen some struggles that you haven't, or maybe they have a, a great insurance agent that they can refer you to. So again, insurance agent would be another, another great piece of your team. It's a lot of horsepower in the room. Right. <laughs> How can I afford that as a business startup? Usually consultations are free. And that is really important because when you're starting your new business and you have this great idea and you, you know, it's kind of like your baby. You want to work with someone that you're really comfortable with and that can be candid with you, that's timely, that's responsive and you know, meeting with someone and talking with them through that process and asking them what they're going to do for you is really an important piece. And most people initially will meet with you um, for free to talk to you about that. You know, we got to bring this podcast home. So in the next few minutes, we want to just touch on uh, uh, some of the highlights. We, we've just... Uh, covered a couple of the areas that you consult with with uh, startup businesses, but I want to jump to uh, the time management and the lack of work-life balances that, that creep into everybody's uh, uh, position, but how do you talk to an entrepreneur 
about those very things, about time management <clears throat> right. and lack of that work-life balance. So we all know that I'm assuming that entrepreneurs in the beginning expect to put in a lot of hours. It, it takes a long time and a lot of effort and time to, to get your business up and running. And I think that they're fully expected to put in that time. One of the upsides of um, having your own business is that it does offer you some flexibility. So um, I think in the beginning, sometimes people think, oh, I'm my own, you know, I own my own business. I'm going to have time off and I'm not really going to have to, um, I may have to work a little bit at night or overtime, but not like I was in the traditional work environment. Usually that's not the case and that in the beginning they, they do put in a lot of time. However, once it's up and running, then they pull back and they say, you know what, maybe it's time to add more people. Maybe it's time to um, someone else can shoulder some of the responsibility for what they've been carrying the whole time themselves. So that's when you meet with your, um, with your advisors and you talk about acquiring talent, searching out people that you can bring in to help um, shoulder some of that workload so that you can obviously um, have some sort of balance in your work and personal life. There's only 24 <laughs> hours in a day. And you won't die at your desk, right? Yeah, that's so. correct. So really keep uh, time management top of mind. That's, uh, that's one of your key. Seek expert advice and market research is a key among any other other things that you can solve with. And probably the fourth takeaway uh, that I came up with is call Melaine Howe. <laughs> well, have CPA. a beer, right? <laughs> yes, and listen to music. And, uh, but that's, uh, that's very helpful because you, you help uh, that individual relax and put, you know, put some sense of order to a very chaotic process. Right, absolutely. And you know, I guess the, um, the takeaway is you know, make yourself a checklist. There's a lot of things on here. And I'm a big list maker, and um, and make a list and, and just you know plow through it. There are people out there to help you do this. We're hitting in the season where you're checking that list twice, yep. aren't you? Oh yeah. <laughs> so our guest today has been Melaine Howell with Ray and Associates, uh, tax consultant in the Dublin, Ohio office. Thanks again for joining us on Unsuitable today, Melaine. Thank you. You've given our listeners some great tips to help them overcome their business challenges. Listeners, do you have any questions about a topic that we didn't cover today? Let us know and we'll address it. Send your questions and comments to podcast at raycpa.com. And remember to check out videos of our podcast on Ray's YouTube channel. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Unsuitable on iTunes and anywhere else podcasts are available. Until next time, I'm Dave Kane, encouraging you to loosen up your tie and think outside the box.